All right, the first thing I'm going to show you how to do with the vinyl cutter is load and unload the vinyl itself. So as you can see right now, our vinyl is loaded and our cutter head is hovering right over the vinyl itself. In the back, you can see where the roll of vinyl is being stored. And then we have our keypad right here. And it's turned on. So if the machine's not turned on, obviously turn it on. Um, you will most likely see the cutter head in this position. Um, and if that is the case, then we need to do a couple changes in the settings to move it out of the way um, to be able to load or unload this vinyl. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to Menu. If you press it once, you'll see it says these different settings. We'll press it one more time, and now you'll see Unsetup. So when you see Unsetup, press Enter. And you should see that cutter head move out of the way. So now that we have the cutter head out of the way, the only thing, other thing that's holding this vinyl in place is these stoppers. And so to release these stoppers, we actually just push back on this little latch here. And now you should be able to take your roll and take it out. Okay, so that's how we remove vinyl. Now let's see how we actually load it. So when you're loading the vinyl, you're going to be using the rolls. So you have a roll like this. And the first thing you need to do is take just a little bit out. And then you'll set the actual roll itself on the holder behind the machine. Now, once you have it set on the holder back there, then the next thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to feed this sheet through here. Now, I need to make a note about this. If you are using the heat transfer vinyl, which is what we're going to be using for masks, you need to make sure that the color side is down. Okay, so the shiny color side should be down. We actually cut it backwards so that when we press it onto whatever article we're putting it on, it shows up forwards. So we'll feed this through the little gap. And you can see it's a little bit tricky if you have a, a, a really curled up thing of vinyl. But once you get one end through, it can be pretty easy to pull the rest through. If you want, you can actually move these little rollers out of the way. That'll make it a little bit easier. And then you'll be able to pull it through. Okay, don't worry about how much you have pulled through right now. We're going to be able to move it back once we have our rollers in the correct place. So you can see that there's little white uh, squares around here. These white squares are what the computer, the uh, vinyl cutter uses to communicate to the computer where this vinyl sheet actually is. So what we need to do is we need to make sure the rollers are over one of these white squares, or over these white squares. If we have a roller that's in the middle, it won't be able to communicate with the computer where this sheet is actually located. So we need to make sure that you're both over white rollers that are over the sheet itself. And you want to be able to make the most of the vinyl we have. So you want to try to find the maximum outside that you can. Okay, so once we have those rollers in the correct place, then the next thing we'll do is we'll actually pull up on this lever to lock it in. And then the final thing we'll have to do is we'll have to go to the settings. And you can see that now it says select sheet. So depending on what we're actually putting into the machine, whether it be just a simple you know, page of vinyl or if it's a whole roll, we can have different things. So we have piece, we have roll, we have edge. We're going to be using the roll. So we'll press enter here. And you'll see the print head move into place. Okay. Now, the printhead's in place, and we could start cutting, and we could go to the computer, but we would be wasting all of this extra vinyl. So what we'll do is we'll actually go to our keypad, and we will bring this vinyl up until it's relatively close to the printhead. So about right there, where is the, you have a flat edge here, that's about how much you want to have out. So we're not wasting hardly any, maybe an inch max. Okay. So once we've moved it there, now we have to reset the origin. So you have to hold the origin button down. It's right in the middle there. Until it says origin set. And you should see the number zero millimeters right there. Once that's the case, you've got your print head in place. You have your rollers in the correct location. Your length is at zero, 
then you can go on to the next step, which is actually importing your design into the Cut Studio. All right, now that we have our vinyl properly loaded and we have our rollers set to the correct width for the vinyl that we have, we're going to go ahead and go into our program, which is Roland Cut Studio. And the first thing we need to do in here is we actually need to set our, uh, get set our settings so that we have the actual material that we're going to be working with. Remember, when you move those roller to the white pieces, that actually sends to the computer where that, that, or how big that vinyl actually is. So, in order to change these settings, we need to go File, and then we go Cutting Setup. And then you can see it says media size. So right now it thinks that the width is 584.2 and the length is 1600. We need to change that and we need to get it from the machine. So now you can see we have the actual width, which is 262.3 millimeters. That's our actual paper there. So the distance between those two little um, white stickers. And then we can click OK. And when we click OK here, you'll see that the surface itself actually changes. Alright, so now that we have our Cut Studio all set up, the next thing that we're going to do is actually download our vector file as an SVG and convert it to an AI so that we can bring it in to Cut Studio. So to do that, this is the vector file that I'm going to actually be using. It's my Cristo Ray logo. I actually need to make a copy of it first. So if I go back, I have my uh, logo here. You can see that there's a duplicate button. Go ahead and duplicate it and then just rename it RP. Vinyl. Because it's going to be separate, uh, of a different vinyl file than it is going to be one that you're wanting to send to the teacher so that they can include it maybe in their email or as their Google logo. So, what we want to do is we actually want to make sure that all of our shapes, if they are not overlapping, are added together so that it is all one color, it is all one object. So if you have your shapes grouped, and that's totally fine, remember if, you know, if we're sending this out, we want the different colors, we would have to group them, we couldn't add or unite, but because when we're doing the um, vinyl cutting, all we're doing is just giving it pathways, we just need the outlines. And then we can individually change the different color of vinyl that we're cutting um, to, to do the different colors in the design. So we'll go ahead and first ungroup these because they were grouped together. And then instead of grouping them, I'm going to use an add or unite. And now it's all one color. And the one color doesn't matter at all because, again, all we're going to be taking from it is the outlines because that's all the vector or the vinyl cutter um, needs, needs the information for. It's just the outlines. So now that we have that, We'll go ahead and export, and we're going to export it as an SVG. So make sure that it is an SVG file. Go ahead and click download, and you'll see the name come up down here. Okay, now, after we do that, then we're actually going to convert it. So there's this online converter. Um, it converts any vector file to another type of vector file. It's the SVG to AI converter. So it's in the toolbox, or the toolbar. Um, it's a favorite. It's a bookmark there. The website is also up here if for some reason you can't find the bookmark. And then all we're going to do, uh, there are some ads, so make sure you don't click on up here. Um, we just want to choose files, so right down here, we'll choose files. If you go into the downloads, you should see your most recently added in there. And then all we need to do is press convert. Give it a minute. Once it's complete, we click download, and you can see that we have, now have the CRPHS logo vinyl, but it's .ai, and that'll actually allow us to bring it in to our cut studio. So now that I have my AI file downloaded in my downloads folder, I can go ahead and go back to cut studio and import it. So make sure that if there is anything in your cut studio that it's deleted, you should have the settings all set up correctly at this point. So we're going to go to import, and then if you don't see your AI file, you have to change because it's probably in picture format, and you won't see it because AI files are not in that picture format. That's, remember, bitmap images versus vectors. So we need to change to be looking for vector files, which is the Adobe Illustrator file. 
and then we can see that there is this CRPHS global vinyl. That's the one that we downloaded. That's the one that we want to import into our Cut Studio. And now you can see that I have that image nice and loaded up. Now that we have our image imported, the next thing we need to do is we need to adjust the size so they can actually fit on the garment that we're trying to put it onto. So before we do that, we need to make sure that our shape is actually one shape. And as you can see right now, there's actually two different parts of this one shape. So what we're going to do is we're going to click and drag and highlight. And what we're going to do is we're going to right click and then integrate polylines. And that will make this all one shape. So that if we're scaling it up or down, it scales all of it instead of just part of it. Okay, so how do we scale this up or down? Well, if you see up here, we have this width and height and we have this keep aspect. So very similar to vector, we can just change the width and height by changing these numbers. If we want to keep it like to scale, so the width and height change, um, we need to change this keep aspect. And that's important when you're scaling it up or down. So most of your masks are only going to be really able to, um, to fit like a 2x2 two two or maybe 2.5 by 2 inch, 2.5 inch logo. Um, so we'll adjust this to make it first the right size, make it 2x2. Two two. And then you can see that, okay, now we have a good size. We want to make sure that it's moved to the very bottom so that we're not wasting any space. If we cut it out and we had this up here, all of this would be wasted vinyl, and we don't want to waste any vinyl. So we'll bring it down to this bottom corner. And then the last thing that we'll have to do is we'll actually have to uh, mirror this so that when we put it on the garment, it's actually facing regular. So to do that, we need to turn off the keep aspect. And all we're doing is just making the width negative. And when you click out, you'll see that it just gives you a mirror image of your logo of what you had before. All right, now that we have our logo scaled and mirrored and ready to go, the final thing we're going to do is actually cut. So because all of our settings are correct, because our logo is mirrored and scaled to the right size, the final thing we would need to do is go cutting and then press OK. Now, you'll say, well, if we just do this, we're only going to have, like, everything's going to be gold. So you have a full gold logo. And that's true. You would have a full gold logo. So if we want to get this, what we would have to do if we wanted to make this white and then this gold, we would just have to do the same cut with the two different vinyls. So we would cut this out one time with the gold vinyl, and then we would cut it out one more time with the white vinyl, and then we can combine those together before we actually do the press to give us the two different colors. All right. So hopefully this gave you enough information to get you through making that mask. If you have any questions, please, please, please ask Mr. M. Remember, wasted vinyl is a lower grade. So please take your time with this. Don't just click through. Don't just click cut. Make sure everything's set up, that people have double-checked, so that when you uh, cut that vinyl, we only do it one time and we don't waste any. All right, so our design is cut out. You can see that this blade just went through, cut everything out. And so the last thing that we need to do then is we need to actually cut this off from the roll. So just like when you were moving things back, when you were initially setting this up, if we use the back arrow here, or the, the uh, kind of arrow that's facing towards you, that'll pull out the actual line. So once you have enough out where you can take your scissors and you, you can actually cut, just make sure that you're looking for your design, that you have actually cut out enough, and then you need to cut straight across. So you're not just cutting out your logo, you're cutting a straight line right across the vinyl so that it is relatively straight right here. And now you can see that I have my logo, and you can kind of barely see it. But if you look, you can see that there are cuts there. And the next part is going to be actually weeding out everything that we don't want. So 
So once you've cut your initial um, your design off from the actual cutter itself, the next step is to cut down and get even closer to your actual design. So cut off all the excess. If you have large scraps like this, please throw them in the scrap bin. You don't want to waste any vinyl at all. But now you can see that I have this cut down. We want to cut it down as small as we can. So you want to get as close as you can without actually touching your logo. So I'll cut that out. Cut this out. And there we go. All right, so then we're on to the next process, which is weeding. Now that we've got our logo cut down nice and small, we can start to take out everything we don't want. And if you remember, for this Cristo Ray logo, the only thing that we want to be gold is the actual crown itself. So anything that's not the crown needs to be taken out. So you can go ahead, use one of the weeding tools, and peel off everything that you don't want. So first, we'll take all of this outside vinyl. So all that outside vinyl is gone. Now, if we wanted a fully gold Cristo Ray logo, then we would just, you know, have this as it is. We would just have to take out the middle. But remember, we only want the gold crown. So we'll take this out. So we don't want any of this stuff. And same thing goes for these other squares. We don't want them. All we want is the crown. Now, it's important that you you actually leave um, this square as it is because you're going to want to line up your other color um, with this design here. So you can see that now all we have is our gold. All right, so I went ahead and cut out the same exact logo in a white vinyl, and I weeded all the parts out that I didn't want to be white. So you can see I'm left over here. So we have our white vinyl, and we have our gold vinyl part. And if I line these up, you can see that the final result, and obviously we want to make it, we will make it better. Um, there we go final result is the logo that we actually want. So our next step is putting this on the mask itself. All right, so we have our logo, we have our mask, we're ready to use the actual heat press. You can see that there's a default temperature set to 300 and default time set to 30. Do not change those, leave those as they are. So you're going to want to start with the color that has the most of your logo. So in this case, the white was the majority of the logo. The gold crown was just a little bit on the end there. And we want to make sure that our mask is flat on here. Make sure that the nose side is up. So you know this is up. We want to make sure that we're putting this on there the right way. So sometimes it actually helps just to actually stick it on there. But there is a little bit of adhesive. So that works nicely. And then again, just make sure that it's flat on the corner and that the entire logo is on the flat surface. Okay, so with this first one, once we have it all laid flat, we have the nose, so we make sure that it's you know, facing the right direction. Um, we make sure that our logo is facing the right direction. Everything looks pretty good there. So we will go ahead and press this down until it locks, and you'll notice the timer start. All right, so you'll hear that ring. That's the time to tell you to take it off. And then once you've taken it off, you go ahead and gently peel the plastic away. You should see that your logo, or at least part of your logo, is nice and attached there. So now we're going to take the second color and, again, making sure that it lines up properly. Set that down there. And then you just need to make sure that the plastic, and this is why you had to make the exact same logo, is covering up 
that vinyl that you already had there. Okay, so we'll have that. That's all in there. It's lined up correctly. Lay it flat. And then for just a little additional added measure of protection, what we're going to do is we're going to use this little sheet of protection paper. We're going to put that down on top of our logo. And then we'll do another one. All right, that timer went off one more time. Now we can pull this off. And now, when we pull that paper off, you can see that we have our logo perfect on there. I'm rocking it. I got one for school tomorrow. Perfect. All right, so hopefully you didn't make any mistakes with that. If you did, remember, you can always just ask me if you have any questions, and good luck with your projects.